interesting session because you know a whole range of issues that we need to think about in terms of moving forward. And I'm not sure if you experience the same in your own groups, but a number of these decisions are actually dependent on, on what happens in you know other areas. So, for example, you can't realistically talk about quality unless you really know what's happening with the pedagogy. And so, we need to accept that these interrelationships <coughs> exist between between these decisions. But what we will do during this uh, session is take feedback from the groups, five minutes from each of the groups, <coughs> an overview of you know, what you discussed and what recommendations you've made. And for, uh, for the local groups, we had a small technical uh, problem for some reason, which I'll try and figure out tonight. Um, but, but if you could email me the outputs that you recorded so that I can get them recorded in the wiki. We will also review the uh, contributions from our remote participants who were discussing uh, the same issue. So I'm going to hand over to, to Robin, I think, <coughs> uh, who's going to okay. lead us through here. Yeah, thanks, Robin. Thanks, Wayne. Well, it's, um, it's, it's great. So you'll be leading yourselves because you've, you know, we've had the discussion. But just before we do that, uh, welcome here to David. David, we talked this morning about you coming from Japan last overnight. So well done. Good. So welcome. And um, the contributions that you make, I'm sure, will be valuable. Okay, um, so perhaps um, the two groups, the two, uh, the two groups, um, are you ready to go with yeah, Kevin, perhaps? Pretty much. Pretty much, okay. Five, five minutes. <coughs> Selling point if it's presented correctly, or could be a drawback if it's not explained up front. So, 
that was kind of where I felt with the crypt notes and Jimmy has some other points. Just one point where I slightly differ from your report, Kevin, is that I think we want to get as much guaranteed cross-credit as possible on whatever is offered. But it wouldn't be that we have to do that. That would depend on institutional process and whether the credit gain um, mapped into a particular program on an institution. So if it wasn't, we strive to get as much as possible, but it's not a requirement. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes, um, I'll try and uh, just point out some of the differences and then go on from there. So I'll start uh, with that point. Um, we uh, agreed that each institution would need to state the conditions required for graduating with a particular qualification. And um, so that would be of the qualifications they want to be associated with. Um, and so they might be selective on that. And we noted that recent changes in regulation in a number of countries, including the USA and New Zealand, uh, about programs um, could actually impact here. But of course, we can also impact those policy decisions as well. So there's a two-way flow there. But we need to be sensitive to the fact that we're in a changing climate uh, for higher education and that this requires senior level commitment, particularly for the change in institutional <coughs> culture. Um, then, uh, I'm going back up to the top, and these are not necessarily in the right order, but this was the first and most important one, perhaps. Um, when we're thinking about credentialing, we need to think about credentials that fit with open education, and this needs to be uh, added to the criteria so that we're practicing what we preach. So that's part of our selection of what to do next. Um, we also noted that the laws and regulations uh, that the specific institutions are subject to will have to be obeyed. There's no way around that. The laws, um, even though we may find to change that. And one example we gave that could be really problematic would be that uh, Empire State uh, has to include the cost of the last 32 credits in full if they're going to get <coughs> that particular program. And so, whereas other institutions like Athabasca can give a general degree without students formally taking courses in Athabasca. So there's very big variations in what, what we're subject to. Um, the professional qualifications that are on the chart are particularly problematic. Uh, because they are subject to professional regulations and bodies and partners. And so we would recommend that the B Ed and the B Nursing are dropped because they're too challenging right now uh, and would have many additional layers of complexity. And for example, your B Ed couldn't be uh, a qualification to become a teacher in a school because there's too many regulations and bodies. Um, we also recommended that the only masters to consider, at least in the early stages, would be the MA, uh, potentially offered by partner universities. And noted that Athabasca plans to offer a MOOC in OER in 2012 that could be considered an early course. But turning that into a master's degree would have to be explored in the first year. It's not an easy move. Um, uh, but also to note that they are developing resources uh, and in particular some PhD students are collecting all the research that can be found in this area and clearly that would be of value to lots uh, of the institutions and to a degree in that area. Um, that's where I declared an interest early as well. Um, we uh, I think are reinforcing what the other group said of preferring to work on a ladder or showcase. Depends which country you come from as to where we think about it. Like a showcase, isn't it? Staircase, sorry. Uh, the certificate the diploma, first degree, uh, but the postgraduate could start without that staircase. So it's not a staircase. Um, that the language is, is difficult and different, and the other group covered that. But to give you an example, at first, North Tech could envisage offering some courses in, uh, the, master, in the science uh, one, but then it turns out that that isn't really a science one at all, so it's a way it's communicated that 
that's quite different from a North American perspective. Um, peer support and advising systems have been clear online, has been an important piece, and that would have to be sorted for some of this to happen. Uh, as part of this, we suggested, and this was near the end, but uh, an innovative suggestion that maybe, I'll call it a collection, but certainly a decent number of scholarships to test out this concept with some, I don't know how we're going to find them or select them, very able students who have uh, good English, <laughs> see all these conditions coming in, maybe from developing countries to help us uh, trial concept. And in essence, they would also be helping us market it, providing we're successful. So <coughs> that's, that's where we looked at. Thanks very much, Nikki. Yeah. It's actually very interesting that there's an emergent consensus around a number of very important facets. I also want to acknowledge the rather active discussion and contributions from our virtual group who have been working with the EtherPad and uh, adding comments, and you'll see a number of the recurrent themes in terms of what has been discussed here locally. I mean, clearly it would be great to have you know, more credentials, but I mean, you know, kind of start somewhere. Um, contributions from uh, Empire State, I imagine colleagues at Empire State are, are engaged actively online, so I mean, you know, that, that is just uh, great. I mean, again, this thing coming kind of, well, why don't we start with you know, the lower Clearly, obviously, in this time frame, I'm not going to be able to report on, on, on every contribution that has come in here. But this would certainly feed into the formulation of you know, final decisions that we, we, we need to take. And then what I'm hearing from the group, and I'm just going to try and soundball uh, what, what I have been hearing, and, and then you can let me know if that's a reasonable basis for the decision. Um, let's, let's start by layering. A certificate which will then ladder or staircase to a, a larger credential. I'm, I'm hearing that from the groups. I'm also hearing that um, stay away from professional qualifications at this time. It's in a too hard box uh, because of the different regional uh, issues around those kinds of qualifications. Um, a number of the issues that are raised in terms of how we cross credit and all those issues are in fact discussions we had in the quality group, so uh, we need to find solutions for this. <coughs> from our discussion, we can see that there is a good foundation. The other thing I'm hearing is certainly with the current education the OER space, it would be feasible to actually look at a, uh, you know, a master's paper, if you will, uh, that can, uh, in OER that can map to some master's degree among some of the partners. So that's kind of what I'm picking up. Um, I mean, is that the kind of decision in this broadest terms? We, we will collectively need to actually refine the decision properly, you know, collaboratively and openly in the wiki. But is that the kind of decision that we collectively would be comfortable with in terms of moving forward to help us prioritize how we select the actual individual courses? Have you seen anybody? Feeding an urge to jump the bridge at the moment. <laughs> Sticking with our philosophy of this morning, any showstoppers in there? Could could you state what we're agreeing to? Very good and valid question. Um, <laughs> what I'm doing is a very sort of a high level feedback, and we need to formulate something that is you know, a bit more robust. But we basically say, start with a smaller chunk of this, you know, bigger credential, um, a certificate or, or the frame of arts idea, um, start with something small, which will ladder to the credential in the medium term. Um, and, and, and it seems that we're going to be informed by the thinking of, you know, the uh, Bachelor of General Studies, Bachelor of Transfers, Medical Studies, Bachelor of whatever it's called at any institution. But let's start there. We're also saying that uh, at post-grad level, it might be uh, a good initiative to actually look at maybe an OER type of paper that maps to an MA with uh, the, you know, some of the institutional partners. Uh, also taking, uh, we're also saying stay away from professional qualifications at this time. 
things like nursing, teaching qualifications that have very local uh, professional requirements. What about bizarre groups? Decision, what are the other ones? They agree with us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, that's no good. I mean, what were you doing out there? Listen to us? <laughs> 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 we already figured that out and moved it beyond. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank um, and, and if so, I will alert um, each of our founding anchor partners uh, to what we see in there. Because ultimately, this is our decision as a founding anchor partner to what we're going to move forward with. So um, that's where we're at over there. Happy. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is attempt to summarize what we were talking about with uh, the quality and, and accreditation piece of all of this. And as you I mean, quality can potentially be a very complex thing, I mean, let's be honest. Um, and uh, and Judith correctly pointed out that you know, if, if you were to ask each of ourselves to give a definition of quality, and even within this room, you know, the discussion point, we would each come up with possibly a very different concept or, or definition of quality. So we recognize the complexity. But, uh, you know, a, a couple of thoughts were tabled, one of which is uh, the notion of um, just working with accredited institutions, which is an important prerequisite for the partnership, is not necessarily going to be enough for the medium term. We will, over the medium term, need to think about uh, how we're going to work within the network. Because we're, the real issue, and I think, uh, again, Jude summarized this uh, rather well, uh, uh, this was really, really an important point. Yeah, this point here that none of the anchor partners will want to jeopardize their rankings or their status um, or the accreditation status within their national jurisdictions. And there's a general acceptance among all of us that what we do with this OER University network should, shouldn't jeopardize that in any way. And this is the, you know, the foundation requirement for quality, which is very, very important. And then we started talking about discussion, or we started having discussions about well, how, how do you recognize credits across this network? What do you need to have in place to do this? And at this point in time, we actually don't have a major problem because all the institutions around the table, I, I, you know, I'm quite confident that each of the institutions that are sitting around the table now would recognize the credit for a given course from that institution as trusted and respected institutions um, you know, within their own net uh, jurisdictions. But in the medium term, we said that we would need to figure out processes whereby member partners could actually endorse uh, you know, other, other partners in the network at some point in the future. And we would need to talk about what those processes would be. Now, this is all you know, quite complex and high up there, but what we uh, did see is that um, thankfully with the work that has been done by the Commonwealth of Learning they have produced a transnational qualifications framework which is actually a robust document which addresses many of the issues we were discussing in the session and our proposal is that we collectively as the, the network and especially the Commonwealth member states within our network um, approach all with a request for guidance, support, and facilitation of how we might adapt that transnational qualifications framework in a way that would work for the network. One of the recommendations coming out there. But you know, what, what we're saying is uh, we recognize it's not simple. Um, we we'll need to look at this over the medium term, but we have a good foundation to start with using Cole's transnational qualifications framework. As, as, as a platform for us to modify for our network. And I hope that is a reasonable summary. It's, um, if, if not, please just correct uh, my assertions. But um, you know, that's where we are at. So, in terms of the other anchor parts that weren't part of the discussion, I mean, is, is that livable? I mean, in, in terms of where we're at at the moment, uh, in terms of moving these quality 
Because, I mean, the real issue is what came part of the discussion is this cross credit between institutions. Part, you know, we've got a trust network here, uh, and we need to make sure that they would be acceptable to all our partners. Can I just check something? Absolutely. Um, it, it would be easy to say that uh, and our institution to select which program we would do that with. But to, to say that on behalf of all of the programs in the OER and could be difficult. Yeah, and, and, and that's a very, it's a very good example of why a transnational qualification framework is an excellent document to do that, because then you've got a, a common framework which different partners can map to. Because all the process and quality requirements in the framework are embedded. So that another institution that looks and sees, well, oh, okay, that's what they've done there. This is what it is in the framework. This maps to what I'm doing here in my local institution. So, yeah. yeah. So, is, is that an issue about, um, do you, you have a mechanism to be able to do it? Uh, yes, and I can see it taking too long. So, for example, if we're think, thinking about that, Bachelor of General Studies of General Education. Um, uh, that would take an awful long time for me to get through the system, and I may not, because I would have to recruit a lot of um, supporters right across the university for that. But uh, going, talking about and working with the program that's in my own area where I have the expertise to back it, yeah, and I can say, I really know these people. Uh, and I can look at these courses and I can uh, stand behind it and we are actually going to benefit from this, then, then I can move ahead quickly. Right. And so it, it also has, uh, has an issue behind it of how fast uh, can move. You can't can, move you the can, whole institution. Oh, no, and you can build the credibility through yes. what they describe. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and then, also, I mean, my sense of this is, um, of course, Individual organisations retain decision making autonomy. Um, it means the university can agree, and any other institutional network would actually decide, yes, I, I will agree this no matter what. Right. So in, in the future, you can imagine a map and we can have a whole list of courses, and get the institutions that will carry credit for those courses through a kind of sort of a pre articulation of credit transfer agreement. So, I mean, again, at the best, the university is going to be a bit of a competitive advantage here. Um, but so be it, I mean, that's, that's a lot of right. yeah. Okay. Any other you know, questions or things you know, that you're feeling really uncomfortable about knowing that you know, I go back to my institution and, and this is just not going to fly? You know, is there an 80 20 chance of success here? Mm. I just think the Bachelor of General Studies, I mean, we don't have one, and right. we'd be unlikely to have one. So our contribution is not to uh, grad students who will be contributing, who will be gaining credit for a Bachelor of Studies at our university. We would be contributing a course to students who may eventually get a Bachelor of Studies at another university. Or our course that we offer would be appointed to some other. Or, or similarly, the other turn this the other way. Yeah, yeah, thinking the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but turn it the other way around. Being equal if we <laughs> only just if we yeah. don't have the whole But turn it the other way around. Um, potentially, you could recruit students because students have completed the first degree of study and then want to uh, matriculate at the uh, University of Ottawa. Yes. So this is really about you accept the first experience, Jim. And the, the other thing is that I think you'd be able to grant credit towards your existing bachelor's degree programs with some of the other courses. Yes. Yeah. So that's another yes. benefit. But we're not a distance education university, so no. they won't be trying to find other courses in our university that would help them complete the mm. degree. We'd only be attracting people to one of our campuses. Yeah. Right, so and we're a blended yeah. you know, organisation, yeah. we don't have everything online. So it's a different model for us, and I think, yeah. Nikki, uh, do I have to just think through the implications of I still think it's a valid one, I just want to make it clear that not everyone will be trying to do a Bachelor of General Studies or, or put together another Bachelor yeah. that they would get at our university online. 
So it's different learning for the distance age mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when I look at this whole thing from an Indian perspective, none of our universities allow uh, students to come in in between. You know, you have to do the whole three year course. None of our universities allow a lateral entry. And plus, we don't have a Bachelor of General Science, uh, Studies. So, I mean, or an Associate of Science. So, none of these courses are going to, I mean, no student is going to, uh, I mean, unless they decide to do this whole course either from Atibasga or from, you know, somewhere, then it's fine. But uh, they can't do it, uh, you know, um, there's no lateral entry into our system at all. So, directly any of these courses may not. Effect, I mean, maybe may not be useful to us directly. Yeah. And, um, the part, I mean, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point. I mean, the partnership has to work with the existing constraints. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, mean, I, th I think that's a general acceptance. You know, we do what we can within existing models and existing constraints uh, because that's the best way to ensure success. Um, and, and, uh, it's an interesting argument around the of change or evolution versus revolutionary change, but I actually think they're two sides of the same coin. Uh, so I just want to add, uh, India has gone, uh, has shifted from an annual move to a semester move. And when they did that, the, one of the largest, I mean, the biggest big statements that all the vice chancellors said is this is to promote inter-university collaborations and collaborations across countries. So we have to wait and watch whether that will happen because this is, uh, for Delhi University it's the second year of semester system and for other universities it's the first year of semester system. So it will take uh, at least four or five years before we sort of work out how inter-university migrations or credit transfers etc. can take this. But this was one of the aims when we switched to a semester system. But can't say what will happen. I guess okay, we, we, need, we need to move on in terms of the time schedule with our international partners. But what, what we will do is um, we will word up what we think the decision is and have each of our anchor bank accounts take a look at it. And um, we'll be in the wiki and um, in good open wiki traditions, um, edit, improve it, make it better. Um, and in a way that's going to work, work, work for us all. So, that, so that's good. At this point, the good news is there's a typing error in, in the program, which means we actually finish up sooner than originally posted. Um, so we're going to move on directly now to the next session, where, where Jim is going to uh, take us through some ideas around open pedagogy and uh, you know, to help inform our thinking for tomorrow. So we've got something to think about this evening uh, in preparation for tomorrow's uh, decision making. I thought we were having a great opportunity. And a no, we have that first. Um, coffee in session. Will the coffee be out? Should be. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> I think the timing is right. Yeah. 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 Yes, my apology, sensitive. Yeah. It is a tea break. Don't try to do it. It's not consensus. <laughs> 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 <laughs>